$3,000 for a gaming monitor. What? Nope, your ears aren't deceiving you. Welcome to the ultimate in no compromises. The flagship gaming monitor from ASUS, the PG32UQX. Packing a 32-inch 4K panel, high refresh G-Sync Ultimate, and the very first mini LED backlight to hit gaming monitors, there is quite literally nothing that this screen can't do. Unsurprisingly, this is the best gaming monitor that you can buy right now. Or at least, it can be. Get this set up properly, fire up an HDR title, and you're getting the best of the best that technology can offer right now. Use this monitor properly, and there is nothing else as punchy, as striking, or as chin on the floor memorable. But $3,000 though, that is such a huge amount of money for a monitor, that this thing better be perfect. And unfortunately, it's not flawless. There are some serious compromises that do remain if you do decide to go for this. So I guess buckle up as we dissect the most expensive gaming monitor on the planet. Whenever you're buying something online, be it as expensive as a super duper 4K monitor, or maybe as elusive as a PC graphics card, you need to shop smart. That's why you simply must grab Karma, the sponsor of today's video. Formerly known as ShopTagger and longtime friend of the channel, Karma is the Chrome add-on that can save you money, help you grab out-of-stock items, and even collect cash back, all completely free. You guys have been telling me about just how useful this is, especially for PC gaming, as you can plan your build and then grab the parts as they come back into stock or go on sale. Just hit the link in the description down below, select Add to Chrome, and that's it. Then you can simply pick an item that you want to watch and add it to a list. These can be organized into different categories as you see fit, and then if a price changes or maybe an out-of-stock item becomes available, you'll get an email and a push notification. Be sure to add the Karma app on your phone too, as this way you'll get notified no matter where you are. Best of all, when you do decide to buy something, Karma will scan the web and automatically apply coupon codes to your basket, so you can save money on your shop with no effort on your part whatsoever. Join the Karma community with just a couple of clicks. Hit that link down below to add the Chrome add-on today. Back to the monitor though. It certainly starts off like a dream. 4K resolution on a 32 inch screen. This is the perfect combination for anyone that loves the 16 by nine aspect ratio. I always knew that the day would come where we'd not only be able to drive this resolution, but blow past that 60 hertz barrier to blend super sharp visuals with super slick gameplay. Unlike the PG27UQ and the Acer X27 that came a couple of years ago though, the 32 inch form factor makes full use of all of those extra pixels. So you're not only getting a super clean image, but an impactful one too. And because it uses DisplayPort 1.4 with display stream compression, you're not having to resort to color loss if you do want to play at 144 hertz. Personally speaking, I will still say that I think ultra-wide is better for my workflow, so for this reason I don't think I would consider picking one of these up. But for gaming, it really is ideal. It's not too big, it's not too small, and it's compatible with pretty much every game out there. When it comes to its design language, I'd actually say that it oozes luxury in my eyes. Yes, it is filled with RGB bling, and no, I wouldn't use it personally, but the frame, the stand, and the color palette will fit into pretty much any setup, with the fit and finish being worthy of the price tag. You get a brand new navigation wheel to make scrolling through the menus much quicker and more intuitive, in addition to the new Live Dash OLED display. The idea with this is that it can show you useful information about your computer's stats while you're gaming, and it even supports FPS readout without a USB connection, which is pretty neat. The ASUS development team clearly had a funny five minutes when they were designing this though, as it flashes up with an R RG logo every 10 seconds or so, rather than just showing the FPS, which is incredibly distracting when you're really trying to focus on your game, and this needs to get patched ASAP. The thing of course that separates this screen from the pack is its backlight, the new mini LED system, that actually in my eyes is a little bit better than OLED. Whoa, 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 hang on a second there, Centric. Slightly better than OLED? Are you taking the mickey? Are ASUS paying you to say this? They are, aren't they? You're in their back pocket. You're not disclosing it. How much are they giving you this time? Two million pounds? Okay, everybody calm down for a second. Let me explain. To be clear, on a television, it's definitely a bit of a toss up because every OLED pixel emits its own backlight. So blacks are well and truly black. On an LCD, however, you need some form of light to actually make these pixels visible, which traditionally means that black pixels can often be a sort of gray. Where mini LED comes into play though is the sheer number of backlighting zones. 
The more zones you have, and the smaller they are, the more accurate that the image can be. This UQX has 1,152 zones of backlighting. That's about 1,020 more than on most HDR monitors, about three times what we saw on the PG27UQ, and then about twice as many as even the Apple Pro Display XDR. But even so, that's still not as good as OLED, right? Well, while it's not quite the same at achieving perfect blacks, Mini LEDs are way, way brighter than OLED could ever dream of, with 1400 nits of peak brightness and 1000 nits sustained. That's about double the best OLED panels can hit right now, which is pure insanity. Furthermore, OLED panels can suffer from something that we call burn-in, when sustained static images can quite physically burn into the panel so that you get an outline of it pretty much all of the time. And you think on a PC monitor, pretty much most of what you're actually going to be using your computer for has static elements on it? That's definitely a very big concern. For these reasons, mini LED technology is incredibly exciting. So even if you're not going to be buying this exact monitor, the tech will become more and more mainstream, and you'll likely be able to experience this in a few years time. Drilling down further into gaming though, and this is where things get a little bit complicated. And I'll start with some bad, but probably not unexpected news. This is not the fastest monitor out there, with a mere 144 hertz of refresh rates. I mean, I say mere, it's hardly slow now, is it? But when you think we've got all of these other panels out there that can do 240, even 360 hertz, for the ultimate gaming monitor to not have those specs, is it really the ultimate gaming monitor? Furthermore, 4K is just so hard to drive that only really an RTX 3080 or above is going to allow you to actually play the games at over 100 frames a second, and even then, it's going to be on a game by game basis. The troublesome news though is not actually the refresh rate, but the response time of the pixels themselves. Having no knowledge of the specs, I could instantly tell that this was not as fast as the Alienware Ultrawide that I just swapped out. And long and behold, in the documentation, this is listed as being about 5 milliseconds when using the most desirable middle overdrive setting. It's not something that bothered me, and I soon got used to it, but it definitely does have more motion blur when you're panning the camera around than quite a few monitors, even ones that are a lot cheaper than this. The upshot of this panel, however, is image quality. The monitor actually comes pre-calibrated out of the box, and in my tests I saw 95% of DCI-P3, 100% of Adobe RGB, and 100% of sRGB. This really is top-end stuff for productivity, so feel free to use this if you're a pro HDR colorist by day, and then PC gamer by night. But for its true purpose of gaming, there will never be a title that you will fire up for the first time and not be blown away with just how good it looks. Valorant, Apex, Mass Effect, Surviving Mars, Gears 5, each one of these took my breath away. This is pretty darn good in SDR, but it absolutely comes alive when you're playing a title with high dynamic range. As the impact of the 1400 nit brights, contrasted with the almost pitch black darks, is something that I just don't think OLED could capture quite as well. Even on the X27 you could notice blooming and haloing around objects, but here, in games, even when you're looking for it, there's just nothing that stands out. Instead, what you get is the most true to life images I'm yet to see on a monitor, and it is just mesmerizing. The key thing that I want you to take away from this is that this isn't just boosting the colors or making everything brighter. What it's doing is taking the very flat image that your brain is just so used to seeing and quite literally making it come alive. What you get is more realistic than ever, adding depth to what would otherwise be a rather mundane, flat looking presentation. Until you see this, I just don't think you'll ever be able to properly appreciate just what this thing can do. And best of all, there's no downside to using the HDR. There's no horrible fan noise like we saw in the last generation, and as we've already mentioned, you can get the proper full colour information at the max refresh rate. My only real complaint, a genuine reason not to buy this, other than the absolutely absurd cost, is the port selection, because this has a G-Sync Ultimate module inside it, which means there is no HDMI 2.1, which is just absurd. I have heard that there are some workarounds you can do, but realistically, best case scenario, some devices will work with reduced color information, but worst case, then you've essentially got a dud of a screen that you can't actually utilize properly, and let's be honest, you'd be very upset. When you think just how expensive this is, you need to be able to properly utilize this. If you don't really play many titles that even support HDR, 
then you have to ask yourself, what's the point? And I know you might be thinking that this is going to be great for longevity, which is true, but don't forget that this will get cheaper over time. There will be more monitors, ones that come with HDMI 2.1 in the future, so if you're buying this for the promise of HDR later, then I don't really think it's going to be worthwhile. And as I said at the start of the video, if you just play multiplayer games, so let's say you play Apex and Fortnite pretty much 24-7, then clearly this isn't going to make sense, not only because you're not able to properly use the HDR, but also because you'd be much better off playing at a lower resolution at a faster refresh rate for lower latency and ultimately a better gaming experience when it comes to being competitive. But in terms of technicalities, is this monitor technically worth the money? I would say yes, because there's not really anything else like it, and while it is ridiculously expensive, that is just how much the tech is. In terms of whether it's actually worth it for you to buy, I'm going to lean more towards no, unless you've got a lot of money. But you probably knew that coming into this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you've liked this, then obviously smash that like button. Get yourself subscribed for more just like this. And if you do want to check out current pricing, which I know you do, it's going to be amusing, then you can find my Amazon affiliate links listed down below and probably some Best Buy links as well if they sell it. Thank you so much for watching this though. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one.